Hello, uh, my name is Garrett Maxson with dragonscripting.com. Um, today we're going to go over select case uh, function um, and how we can use it. Uh, this is, can is going to be part of our advanced scripting fundamentals package um, that we have a playlist on YouTube and then um, we have that package for the commands already written out on the uh, website dragonscripting.com already. Um, so what select case does is kind of similar to an if then um, function. Uh, whereas if then can be used multiple times it just makes it a little bit easier to use it's a little bit um, more organized easier to look at less typing to be done um, and is used for something there's a lot of um, there's a lot of options to do uh, so a lot of different branches out that can go or I, I typically use it when I'm using dialog boxes and I'm using a form that I'm filling out if there's some kind of like math that I need to do and I'm not positive what the full-on outcome is going to be um, but I could use it as a range or I could um, I, I could use it I can use it in some cases where it's specific information let's just go into it and look at it so um, I made two of them one's for going to be for voice recognition one of them is just going to be for um, programming in itself uh, and so we'll go ahead and just use play in this one but I'm going to tell you what's going on here so we wrote it up um, right now we have a variable here I um, and then we have we're going to put in from uh, a, a value into this variable and we're going to do that by using an input box it's a very simple way to do an input um, we'll make a tutorial about that as well um, as far as also being part of the fundamentals package um, so but in this case we're just using this input box to input information into this variable this is off and then from there this is the select case itself now you can use select you can use case by itself you can use end by itself. These things just work together. So, and in, in what you're telling the system to do is you're telling select case based on the information in this variable. Select the case based on the information that we inputted into this variable. Uh, there's other uh, tutorials based on what what variables do and how to put information into them, in, in lots of the videos. Um, so, I'm we'll just go on from there. So, based on the information that's put input here, uh, we're gonna it's gonna create a, a um, if then kind of but it's going to go by case so in the case that a or the I is equal to capital A then do this information and then skip over the rest if I is equal to B then do that set of information and then move on don't go on any other ones um, so let's go ahead and look at that um, so input your information I have this is part of a different one but we're just going to go ahead and press a a and that's going to bring us to you typed A. So we typed in capital A and it brought us into this message box as you typed A. Now if I type in my name, if case is Garrett, which was the default, which is from here, it'll say you typed Garrett. Now you can do it with numbers or strings, you can do it with integers. Um, in this case, it's better with the uh, strings based on. Um, the fact that there's a variable, you could you can make up a variable over here, or not make it up, but you could type in a variable and it wouldn't work out the same way. Um, so try to stick to strings and what the information in you're inputting in there is going to come in as a string. Um, you can also do this, and this is the reason why this was, is this is what I was talking about as far as the dialog boxes. You can create um, a math equation, um, and you can say i is 11. So what what happens here is I forgot to put this part. So if there's, we're inputting information there, but if the if the uh, information that we put into the input box doesn't actually relate to any of these, we need to have a catch-all. And this is our catch-all down here, is case else. So case, anything else except for what was entered, and then it'll go ahead and it'll, put, it'll tell us what's going on. So if we typed in something that didn't belong to any of these cases, it needs to do something, otherwise it's just gonna pass by it. So here we can have some kind of error correction. So, this isn't going to be the error correction, but this will just be say that this is where we would put error correction. Um, here. And then we can go ahead and type something in, and if we didn't type something in, we'll just type in failure, and that'll go, um, yeah. That's coming out as a number, that's why. So let's take this, cut that out for now, I'll explain that in just a second. So anything else, failure? and error correction is needed that it popped over here. So the reason why it, that it translated it into a number into an integer when that happened, that's 
um, kind of the reason why you don't use integers in these spots. But in cases that you do use integers, so such as here, we're going to do I, uh, double i equals 11 times 5, which is going to be 55. So in that case, we could use that in a form saying if we had a, a form that had, um, you had to compare weight with age of something, um, and then you needed to add those numbers together or either convert a number, um, many different ways or reasons why you would do that. But if you're taking information inputted from a form that you can create with dialog boxes, and you don't know exactly where that number is going to be, or you're going to give a percentage based on that number, um, you can make a 2. So this is the integer 3 to the integer 100. Anything that falls within that range is going to come out to do this instruction. So we did double I, triple I there, or double I, and that is going to be 55. So when we press play, it's going to wind us up. And this is not going to matter anymore because we're not going by this case. I'm just curious, cancel it, doesn't matter. So you typed a number between 3 and 50, or 100 take this out and so any number that we type in here that's between um, 3 and 100 it's going to go to that case and when we go outside of that case then it should go back to error correction again because it's no longer between 3 and 100 so you can set up another range here so that's that's nice to have that ability to make that range it kind of catches things in, in areas so it doesn't have to be so specific you can be very specific with just using a string or you can make it a little bit wider of a catch using two or using else. Um, so that's how you use it in programming. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do it. It just makes it organized, makes it nice and clean. There's only so many lines there. Um, so we'll go ahead and cancel out of this. So with that same thing, we're going to do part for voice recognition. Um, Usually we just have a lot of you know different commands for things that we're saying out, but if you wanted to make it smaller, if you wanted to take ten commands and make it into one, that way it's easier to distribute or to look at or to change, um, which it can be a lot. Uh, you can just go ahead and you can do a case then, and then in this point we're using name editor and we're going to use a list variable. We go over list variables in other um, tutorials as well, and I put a list that says between. A, a to J. So anything between A and J. And then it'll hear me and I'll say example of select case A and it'll come out here. Example of uh, select case G and it'll come down here. Oh. Example of select case A. And our box comes up, so you said A. So again, it goes to this function. So we can, or this, uh, this case, sorry, not this function. So we, we can use this for voice recognition in itself and we use it with list variables. So there can be a list variable here, um, and there can be another list variable after, after that. So example of select case A1. And we can then, instead of here, we can do another select case within here. Um, oops. Now we could do a number of these and inside of here. And then we can also do if then functions too. Um, or then statements to go through. Um, but th if that makes hopefully sense, we have case A and then we have a select case and select within that two going on list var two, but we don't have anything there yet. We'd have to add another list, one to ten. Okay, so we've got example of select case A, one. And that'll bring us select case A, and that'll bring us then select case one based on list variable two. List variable two is up there. So let's try this out. Example of select case A1. A1. So even though it took the command in differently, so if it's seeing A1, it's bringing us through one, the list variable one, which is the A. Select case A, and I again can go and say select case B. Anyway, so that's how you can put more and more through, and that's on list variable. Um, 
Again, I use this mostly for dialog boxes. Uh, I will use these with with voice recognition as well, um, generally for uh, for different areas of, of like weight or comparing things together. It's a little confusing, but hopefully this is helpful. Um, thank you for watching. Please uh, give us a like or some feedback, um, some questions. This, this one's a little confusing um, on the YouTube site. And then also um, check out our website at dragonscripting.com uh, for more commands and other tutorial videos. Um, we also have a mailing list that you can sign up for on the site. Uh, that will give you the most recent updates or videos or anything that we're posting. Uh, thank you very much for watching.